Well, this is definitely a change of pace. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. I will be reviewing Dutch fitness YouTuber Sophie from Gains by Brains. Also check out my disclaimer on screen and in the description, including a quick trigger warning. As always, skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. Also, if you're new here, do not forget to subscribe and ring that bell so that you never miss out on an episode. All right. so. Sophie from Gains by Brains is a certified personal trainer with a master's degree from the Netherlands who shares customized programs and self-branded fitness equipment, as well as lots of free content on her YouTube channel. So I watched her recent Level Up series, and I'm specifically going to focus in on episode two because she's sharing both her eating philosophy and how she improved her relationship with food, as well as a day of eating. So let's take a look at her first meal. My first meal is usually oats. I add nuts or seeds and nut butter to add some healthy fats to the meal. So I quickly whipped up some egg scramble with cabbage. And for that, I'm cutting some garlic, red onion and cabbage. I heat some oil in the pan and then I add the garlic and onion. And then I add two eggs and one egg white. This also increases the fats because of the oil in the pan and the yolks. Okay, so the combination of the oatmeal bowl with the egg cabbage situation makes a perfectly balanced and super satiating meal. So we've got fiber rich carbs in the oats, berries and the cabbage. We got protein in the eggs plus some fats in the nuts egg yolks and oil that she mentioned. And she mentions that on days that she's really busy, she gets her protein fix from like a protein shake. So I really like that she has both a fast food option and a slow food option for getting her protein in the morning. So she can easily switch it up while keeping meals balanced, depending on what time and ingredients she has on hand. Also that crispy cabbage egg situation. <gasps> I am stealing that. And whenever I order takeaway, as I did for lunch here, I try to pick something that I love eating and that fits with my approach. So I got some avocado on toast with eggs and a green juice. Simple, and it's one of my favorites. This looks like a lovely nutrient dense and likely very delicious restaurant option. So we've got protein in the eggs, fiber in the bread, and some avocado. We've got fat in the egg yolks and the avocado, plus lots of micronutrients in the juice as well. And while yes, this is pretty much the epitome of a wellness influencer's lunch, what I love here is that it isn't coming served with a side of diet culture. It's just like she's saying, you know, I choose foods that I enjoy that fit my values. It's not, I drink green juice to detox and speed up my metabolism. Folks, intention is key. Choosing green juice because it makes you feel energized and refreshed and because you like the flavor is a really healthy choice in my books. But choosing green juice to punish yourself for eating pizza the day before, not so much. Do you see the distinction? And then I'm also roasting some pine nuts for the healthy fats. And then I just add everything together, add a yogurt dressing and voila, super delicious and colorful, if you ask me. Okay, this looks amazing and also super well balanced. So we've got fat in the dressing and nuts. We got protein in the chicken, carbs in the fries, and lots of fiber and antioxidants in the salad. I also really appreciate that Sophie isn't scared of using oil, but it's also all about smart use of oil where it helps to add flavor and nutrition. So knowing that air frying those French fries will still yield the flavor and texture that she enjoys, she can kind of hold off on the oil there and enjoy a full fat dressing on her salad greens. This is to me what balance is all about. Now in this video, she doesn't show any snacks, but this video also wasn't explicitly labeled as like a what I eat in a day. So it's very possible that they just weren't shown. But when I watched her what I eat in a week video, she did show that she often has some kind of like yogurt cup or chocolate rice cakes for a snack. Both delicious options when you're craving just like a little sum something to get you that next meal. But if she wanted to hunger crushing combo that, she could throw some nut butter onto the rice cakes or throw some high fiber cereal or fruit on the yogurt. 
which I actually saw her do at one point in that video as well. All right, so let's take a look at the stats here. Now, this was a bit hard to judge as I wasn't sure if there would be a snack in there, but I would say it appeared to be around the 2000 calorie mark with around 55% of calories from carbs, 20% from fat, 25% from protein, and around 30 grams of fiber. So this to me is a really super balanced diet and depending on her activity level, a decent amount of calories as well, which of course is nice to see. Okay, so in order to share my thoughts on Sophie's diet and approach to food, I really want to zone in and comment on some of her sentiments about how she changed her relationship with food. So let's take a look. And this started with me figuring out what my macro should be, what my intake should be, and I just did it by calculating and using formulas. I started tracking macros and just trying to find my way in what I was providing my body versus what my body needed to feel best. And what I learned is that you have to stick with something that works for you. So, okay, first of all, these online macro calculators are designed to loosely predict caloric needs with modest accuracy. It's certainly not meant to prescribe them. So age, height, weight, activity, body composition, all will play a role in addition to things that you can't really account for in a calculator, like health status, genetics, medications, climate, sleep, etc., There's also the nuance in activity output that really just can't be captured by simply asking if you do light, moderate, or heavy activity. Now, I actually tried her calculator myself, and because there's strangely no option to just like maintain my body the way it is in all of its mom bod glory. I selected the recomp feature, AKA to reduce body fat and increase muscle. So I was told that I need 2023 calories, which is definitely less than what I eat. But of course, again, I'm not trying to change my mom body. So I asked my colleague, Chelsea Cross, who specializes in sports nutrition, and she suggested that most people actually aren't able to easily recomp just from manipulating their diet alone. For someone who isn't completely new to weightlifting or having a protocol for dieting and exercise, building muscle is more optimized in a slight surplus in which some gain in fat is to be expected. This doesn't have to be a large surplus. However, true recomposition often takes time of being in the slight surplus and dieting while also being intentional and consistent with their training and recovery protocols. So I don't think it's realistic to expect that there's any kind of magic macro split that allows you to gain muscle while losing fat. Now, recomp calculations aside, I think is a very, very rough starting place these numbers could be potentially somewhat helpful for some people, but I agree with Sophie that at the end of the day, you really have to find a way of eating that feels best to you. Some people are going to naturally thrive on a higher carb, lower fat diet, and others might just have more energy and better blood sugar control eating lower carb. But a super basic calculator online that considers only your body weight and your rough activity level is not going to accurately capture the nuance and diversity of human metabolic needs. So via trial and error, I figured out what works best for me. Uh, that being said, I have tracked macros previously for a long time, so I can estimate pretty well what macros are of different dishes, so I know what I am eating even though I'm not currently tracking and I don't plan on tracking in the near future. But it is knowledge that I know that's in my head and that I can apply whenever I just look at something, for example. So a lot of influencers talk about tracking calories or macros for long enough that this information becomes kind of second nature or what they sometimes even call intuitive. And I don't think that this is a bad approach. I do believe that knowledge is power, and if knowing that a potato has more carbs than an avocado helps you plan satiating and balanced hunger crushing combos, I think that that's great knowledge to have. But I also don't think that you need to reduce foods down to a series of numbers or to plug meals into an equation to be able to effectively build healthy meals and snacks. So if you like math and this doesn't interfere with your enjoyment of life or take up so much mental energy that it robs you of time for other acts of self-care, 
then fine. Like track those macros, you do you. But I also think just knowing something top level, like the fact that blueberries are a great source of fiber rich carbs, and therefore they can pair nicely with the fat and protein in almonds is totally enough for most people to promote really good health. I also think that while macros may be important for body composition, micronutrients are also very important. And rather than counting micros, because like fuck, that would be a full-time job, nope. we can really just focus on greater variety and color. So I say, keep it simple, stupid, and like, let's just move on with our lives. And no, I'm not calling her stupid. That's just a very common phrase and saying. The first step is to try to stick to eating balanced meals. This means that I try to have three larger meals during the day that consist of fats, carbs, and protein. I notice that this helps me feel full and satisfied for longer. Yeah, girl, get it. You go, girl. <laughs> I mean, she maybe doesn't know it, but I know that you know that we know she's talking about the hunger crushing combo. <laughs> fiber, protein, and healthy fats. And if you wanna learn more about that, you can check out my video right here for loads of inspiration. Now, do I think that you need to weigh out your oats in order to make healthy, balanced choices? No, I don't, obviously. But I also understand that she has potentially some specific body composition goals. So, I mean, to each their own. The second step is to try to stick to whole foods. This means that I try to keep the bulk of my diet minimally processed. Examples are whole grains, fruits, or vegetables. So I think this is a general good approach. So whether the goal is health related or aesthetic, we know that a diet rich in whole foods is going to be a good bet because these foods tend to be higher in hunger crushing compounds like fiber, protein, healthy fats, plus antioxidants, and typically lower in saturated fats, salt, and sugar. But of course, it's very important not to demonize processed foods. And unlike most wellness influencers, I don't really think that Sophie does. So she seems pretty neutral in her description of foods and seems to make choices based on what just feels best to her. But also processed foods are not the devil. Let's not forget that processing makes a lot of healthy foods accessible to us. So yogurt, canned tuna, frozen vegetables, canned beans, bread, cheese, whole grain cereal are all examples of nutrient dense processed food. So we don't need to necessarily cut processed foods completely out of our diet to maintain a healthy, balanced lifestyle. And whenever I order takeaway, as I did for lunch here, I try to pick something that I love eating and that fits with my approach. And this is ideally the way that it should be, you know? We're eating in a way that both supports our physical and emotional needs and therefore is more likely to be maintained in the long run. Third and final step is to keep it colorful. I know that these steps sound so simple. Uh, in a TED talk towards a science of simplicity, Harvard professor George Whitesides actually breaks down simple in three characteristics. It's predictable, it's accessible, and it serves as building blocks. Predictable, accessible, and serving as a set of building blocks. I love this philosophy. And to think of these guidelines as building blocks rather than hard and fast rules that are set in stone, so great. I mean, it's like something that can be built upon based on your unique needs and likes. This is not unlike the recommendations that I gave in my video on gentle nutrition tips for weight loss, where I talked about focusing on what you can add to your diet rather than what you have to take away. So shifting the focus towards abundance rather than denial is really the key to preventing scarcity mentality and preventing the all too common restrict binge cycle. I also agree that any way of eating needs to feel accessible. If you're having to choose between affording the long list of superfood powders on your goop cleanse or milk for your kid's cereal for the week, I would say that it's not a very accessible long-term diet plan for you. And then there's predictable. Now, a lot of people assume that intuitive eating is all about spontaneity and living in the moment. And it can be, but I think this approach actually ostracizes or intimidates a lot of us folks 
who really do thrive in a stable, predictable environment and routine. So predictability to me is not about rigidity, it's just about your body having trust that you will feed it regularly and feed it enough. It's about knowing and trusting that you don't necessarily need to eat the entire batch of cupcakes today because you know that tomorrow is another opportunity for deliciousness. Now I acknowledge that food security factors definitely come into play here. And I actually think that that's something that the intuitive eating model doesn't quite address. But assuming that that's not a major concern, yes, I do think that these three tenants are great guidelines to eat by. So generally speaking, I really enjoyed what I see here in Sophie's content. She doesn't seem to be cutting out full food groups and eats by a set of values rather than a set of diehard rules. I actually watched a bunch of her vlogs and the meals in her wedding in a week seem to echo this sentiment as well. And what I really love here is that there's so much variety in her day and week. We actually see a nice range of protein sources, fruits and veggies and starches represented in her week. So she clearly is able to be flexible in her meal planning while sticking to a general formula of getting in her carbs, fat and protein in most meals. I also love that when she talks about nutrition, it's about using macros as building blocks for building balanced meals rather than reducing food down to sensationalized claims. I really do believe that when it comes to a healthy diet, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So we really need to think big picture, which I think that Sophie does pretty well with her diet and nutrition philosophy. Obsessing over the MCT content of coconut oil or the cluster salts and celery juice or the vitamin C and lemon juice reduces food down to a series of unrelated numbers and totally misses the forest from the trees. The simpler we can make healthy eating, the more likely we are to stick to it. And I do think that Sophie's approach is one of the more simpler evidence-based approaches that I have seen in the wellness influencer community. And on that note, that is all for today's wedding day review. If you liked it, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Whoop, boop, boop. Leave me a comment below on who you want to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.